This week conflict zone is in the Estonian capital Tallinn to meet George Schöpflin, who sits in the European Parliament for Hungary's governing Fidesz party. On April 8th, Prime Minister Viktor Orban was re-elected using rhetoric described as intimidating and xenophobic. Will that kind of nationalist vision decide the future of Europe? George Chaplin, welcome to Conflict Zone. Your Prime Minister Viktor Orban was just re-elected to a third consecutive term. The Organization for Security and Cooperation, OSCE, said the opposition did not really have a chance to compete. Yes, well, it's their job. It's yes? It's their they job. They didn't have a chance? They did have a chance and they actually got, I've forgotten exactly how many votes, but they, they got best part of two million votes, Fidesz got 2.7, that tells me that there is competition and besides, uh, you know, they have to say things like that, that's their job. Why? The criticism is not their job. The OSCE is, e is a neutral organization and a very well respected. The report said, quote, intimidating and xenophobic rhetoric, media bias and opaque campaign financing, end of the quote, hindered voters' ability to make an informed choice. This was not a fair election, was it? I think it was a very fair election. I was there for the whole of the campaign. I didn't see intimidation and I wasn't just sitting in Budapest. I was but you are not objective. You are no, part of Finnish. Yeah, but nor are they. There is no such thing as objectivity. I don't believe in fairy tales either. Um, do you think that the OSCE is objective? No. No. Do you think that anybody is objective? No. Do you think that even if it is not subjective, the OSCE said these elections were not fair? Hungary is member which means that you accept the standards of this organization. Do you accept the standards of this organization? We do accept the standards, and I think that the OSC got it wrong. But if you accept the standards, uh, th this means that you have to accept also their criticism seriously. We take the criticism seriously. I think there are always grey zones where interpretation comes into the picture. I think they came along as usual, uh, with a certain set of ideas about how Hungary is, that they get that from the Western media, the Western media listen only to the opposition, so they ignore the grey zone of interpretation. That's okay, we're used to that. But this is not really an answer. The head of the Observer mission, Douglas Wake, said there was a pervasive overlap between state and ruling party resources which undermine the ability of opposition candidates to compete equally. Having democratic elections mean not tilting the scales. Look, the scales are always tilted to some degree depending on what the population, the voters, really? actually want. Oh yes. Come on. It is not a little bit cynical for a Democrat? I don't think it's cynical. I think it's realistic. I mean, think about it. So si cynical, to, to be cynical is realistic? Not invariably. I mean, you know what the word cynical means. It's dog-like behavior. I don't think I'm a dog. Is morality something in politics? Morality and politics are obviously linked. And obviously, equally obviously, morality is something that must always open to question. Otherwise, you get into what is known in the trade as monism, a single concept of morality, which is anti-democratic. That was the Soviet Union. But let's speak about uh, the free press. This is constitutional for democracy? For democracy? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Journalists were pressured, state broadcasted biased, and government messages campaigns overlapped with your parties. Is that what you call fair, the freedom of press? I would not call that fair, but then that's only one opinion of how things are in Hungary. If you look at the entire picture of the media, there's enormous diversity. The trouble is, you see, that other than Hungarians, nobody knows Hungarian, so they can't do a proper content analysis. Do of I what need is actually to know public. a country to understand if the standards of free press are given or not? Well, I think it really helps if you actually do know something about the but country. But if you don't, if this you is don't, a really problem to judge about uh, certain scales and standards? I think there is a real problem. Uh, I read what happens, let's say, in Venezuela, but I don't really know. 
because I have to take the word of the journalists, the interpreters, who tell me, and they have a bias, they're not objective. Let's talk about migration, because this was the overwhelming campaign issue during the campaign. <clears throat> Sorry, Prime Minister Orban says, quote, we do not consider these people as Muslim refugees, we consider them Muslim invaders. Do you agree? Um, I think he said economic migrants. Uh, in, he does, he has said in the past, I was present when he said this, that there are three types of people coming to Europe. There are genuine political refugees, asylum seekers, there are economic migrants, and there are fighters. We know I'm this. speaking about invaders. I'm coming, this is the I'm, quote. I'm Do you agree that. that there are Muslim invaders? It depends on how you define invasion. If you define invasion in this instance a peaceful invasion, then I think it's clearly the case that very large numbers of people arrived in Hungary without so much as buy or leave in 2015, marched through the country. This was traumatic. You know what invaders means. There is a connotation with the word. This is hate speech. If you say Muslim invaders, this is hate speak, isn't it? No, I don't think it is. So what is hate speak? Well, that's... The Muslims, term. the Muslims, generalization, invaders. That's we know how these the pictures are used. Everybody generalizes. You generalize, I generalize. I don't generalize if I speak about groups, especially religion groups. I'm sorry? So, you, but your you, prime you, minister generalized, not only saying the Muslims, but he is also adding invaders. What a picture! You know what this means. Well, I think violence. I, I think aggression. I know what you mean. That isn't necessarily the same as what Orban means. And secondly, of course, there are collectivities, and we make generalized judgments about them, religious groups, just as much as secular ones. Invaders means aggression. You have a lot of potential of threatening people. Do you believe that the Muslim groups, as he said, are invaders? Uh, what I saw in 2015, when I was there, uh, was structural violence, something against which nothing could be done. It was a flood of people who were paying no attention to what they were doing. If you want to call this invasion, you can call it invasion. You can also call it a tide. You can use all sorts of but metaphors. But he didn't spoke, uh, speak about uh, refugees, migrants. He said Muslim. Yes, I think that the great majority, if not 100%, there were some Christians, they were overwhelmingly Muslim. You are a member of the European Parliament. Article 21 of the European Charter clearly states, quote, any discrimination based on any ground such as religion or belief shall be prohibited. Muslim invaders, if that is not a religious discrimination, then what is? Well, if you're quoting the Charter of Fundamental Rights at me, fine. Please recall Article 1, which is about human dignity. And here, the human dignity of the Hungarian population is every bit as important as that of the Muslim Oh, we type. agree. Do you believe that in Hungary, this is today's reality? Muslim invaders, millions could come to Hungary, are in Hungary, and want to suppress your people. No We're question. speaking about Hungary. I understand that, but you have to see it in the European context, possibly a global context. There's no question that large numbers of people in the world are on the move. Uh, Hungary, I think, experienced this profound shock uh, in 2015, um, and they are, there are not, at this particular time, very large numbers of, there are some Muslims, but not very many in Hungary. What the great majority of Hungarians do not want there's poll polling figures to back this up, is that there should be a lot of Muslims. Mr. Schaffrey, fair enough. But we are now in 2018. Yes. And these quotes are also partly coming from the election campaign, 2018. So what's about today? You still believe that there could be a Muslim invasion in your country? Yes, I think. Um, I wouldn't use the word invasion, which is the one that you're in love with. No, it's your prime minister who yeah, is but, in love but you with. Keep I'm quoting very it. sorry. You keep quoting it. They want to take away our country. Who exactly, who exactly, Mr. Schöpflin, wants to take away your country? I think uh, the very large number of refugees who may potentially want to settle in Hungary, aided and abetted by Western liberals. And they want to take away your country? 
They want to transform the country in such a way that it's no longer recognizable to the great majority of people who live there at this time, rightly or wrongly. <clears throat> On one hand, your prime minister always said nobody of these refugees wants to stay in Hungary. They want to go to Germany. On the other hand, you are telling your people that every Muslim wants to stay in Hungary. Uh, I don't understand the logical argumentation. I don't think we're saying every. Muslim. So a lot. I We're mean, foreigners quite, wants to take away our country. This is a quantity. This is a, a certain quantity. We don't know exactly how many, but we really don't want to find out. You proposed, you proposed, putting pig heads on the border fences to deter Muslims. Yes, I did, I did tweet this. Quite right. What was the idea behind that? Well, it all began with some pictures uh, of, I think, masks, which I saw as being apotropaic. Uh, so I said, well, why stay with masks? Why not put up pig's heads? This was criticized to be racist and a degrading idea. Yes, it was, yes. This is was true. it uh, racist? I don't think it is. Uh, I think it's uh, looking at the way in which, for Islam, uh, pork, pigs are haram, unacceptable, um, a form of pollution, and therefore to say to them, look, if you come to Hungary, you will find that people eat pig, people eat pork in Hungary. Be a do, you respect, do you respect the Islam religion? Do I respect Do you it? respect this religion? I don't know what you mean by respect here. Of course it exists. Is this religion uh, as respectable as Christianity or Jewish, Judaism? I have some problems with uh, Islamic theological doctrine. Do you want that Christianity is respected? I would like to see a Christianity that's respected. I think that's right. Do you know that, for example, your idea with the pig heads is also racist and a degrading idea for Jews? I'm fully aware of that. So was it also a message to the Jews? Because it was not clear to whom the message was given. Uh, I think it was clear in the context. I mean, it was about the, on the fence and it was facing the migrants coming towards Hungary. I think it was very clear. I have said elsewhere that one of the responsibilities of the present government in Hungary is to protect the third largest Jewish community in Europe. But this is Europe. rude. Rude? Yeah, I think to, um, to express a no for a cultivated person as you are, to use pigs, you know what this means for people who are Jews or Muslims, or don't you know? I have an idea. You know, um, or you have an idea? I have a fairly good idea, although some will not take it quite as seriously as you are at this particular Look, as, moment. as you have to decide to do it, it's one thing, but how seriously it is taken, this is also something you know. Oh, you are no. suddenly very naive. No, I'm not naive. You are about a historian, this, no, an academic. No. I'm simply saying the subjective perception of a phenomenon will always vary. I have no idea uh, how uh, a non-religious Jew would respond to you this. You have no idea. I have no idea because they vary amongst themselves. Some of my you know Jewish that this friends. This is not a religious attempt only. It is also a principal attempt for a Jew. Or for a Muslim, the principle a pig head. Yes. Nazis, anti-Semitic people are throwing pig heads uh, at the synagogue to describe their disrespect. Now it's a fence. Not in Hungary, they're not. Uh, not in Hungary. There is no anti-Semitism in Hungary. Very little. Very little. Are you really sure? Mm, that's what the surveys tell me. That's what the reality is not telling me. The World Jewish Congress, for example, was very clear on that, that not only Hungary and your government has a problem with Muslims, but also with Jews. I think the World Jewish Congress is in error in this respect. Everybody's in error. This is the first government of Hungary, the, the second Orban government, which recognized that Hungary was responsible in part for the Holocaust. Which I doesn't mean that you learned something in the present time. Well, this is, I think, very real. And I think the various Jewish communities, there isn't a single Jewish community in Hungary, accepted this and regarded it as positive. I was there at that particular occasion. There's no question in my mind that um, 
you will find individuals who are anti-Semitic. Let's talk You're about the anti-Semitism or the alleged anti-Semitism of the campaign of your prime minister. I would like to talk about in Hungarian exile, George Soros. It was almost as if in the most recent election your prime minister was running against him. He compared Soros to the invading armies of the Turks, Soviets and Habsburg's rollers saying Soros allies in Hungary would face revenge. Revenge for what? And the why word, Soros? Uh, the translators have let you down. The word isn't revenge, it's amends. Elektator is the Hungarian word. So don't always believe what the journalists tell you. As far as Soros is concerned, I think this is a superb electoral trap set by Fidesz, basically, in effect, making Soros the symbolic leader of the opposition, which means that the bulk of Hungarian voters will not vote for him. Um, Orban also promised to send Soros, quote, home, even though the Hungarian-born financier has not been in the country for years. What did Orban mean, sending home? This is a symbolic Soros, not the real individual. Ah, it's a symbolic one. As I know, we have individuals for what the symbolic Soros is a symbol. Quite right, yes. This, there are individuals for whom Soros symbolizes what? liberalism of a particular kind, certainly visceral opposition to Fidesz, visceral opposition to Orban. It's a part of politics. And these politics. people were sent home. They hadn't been sent home. It was a simply, I think, part of a campaign rhetoric I don't think anybody will be sent home, but as you probably know, open society is currently thinking about moving to Berlin. It may happen. I thought that in democracies, oppositions are not sent home. They are a part of home, but a lot of the debate around Mr. Soros and his influence has descended into lines of argument about, quote, international finance, which is a code word used by anti-Semites, you remember, also by the Nazis. Mr. Soros is Jewish. Viktor Orban who is a very intelligent man, do we agree? We agree. Must know which flames he was feigning when he played with anti-Semitic stereotypes well, during his campaign. I don't see it as anti-Semitic. I think you could give it that reading, but I think it was much more about the finance. And Soros, as you know, has actually been fined in France uh, for his speculation. He took a million pounds off the Bank of England. I'm a British taxpayer. Mr. Orban is also not a very, um, let me say, socialist person. He loves to make businesses. But this, what you are telling us, is, uh, uh, is years ago. We are today. Why does he play with the international finance picture? You can't scrub history entirely. We're all made of our own past, you and me included. Merely because this has happened 15, 20 years ago doesn't mean that it lacks a reality today, it does. Look, um, Andreas Heisler, the chairman of the Hungarian Jewish Federations, called on Mr. Orban to end the campaign using Mr. Soros' picture. The organization said it was a proxy for anti-Semitism. Uh, I, hmm? I can understand that Heisler would want to say this, because, of course, he is in touch with the World Jewish Congress and so on, and they are concerned. But it seems to me that there's a real danger of anti-Semitism in countries where there's a large Muslim minority, not in Hungary. Do you know, do you remember being an academic and historian that anti-Semitism existed also in East Europe, also in Ung Hungary, yes, course, before yeah. refugees came three years ago? Uh, do you remember that also in your country, before they came, you had problems? I wanted only to add that to your comment, can I, because it looks like that... Can I the anti-Semitism of today is the anti-Semitism of Muslims alone. Can I answer this? Please. I was there when the Holocaust took place. I was four years old. I remember seeing people with yellow stars. I wasn't old enough to watch the trains pulling out of the, the brick factory for Auschwitz. Of course I know. I know all this. I worked on this. But at the same time, I do not believe that everything can be written down as anti-Semitism. There are different interpretations, and the way in which uh, the campaign was run would certainly, has certainly been seen as anti-Semitic by various people. It doesn't mean it was. Andrew Strohan uh, from Human Rights Watch said, I'm coming back to your pig, your words are disgusting. I would expect that from anonymous neo-Nazi trolls, but you are an MEP. Act like one. He's wrong? 
Uh, he's disgusting. I think he also called me human filth. That's Nazi language. It's hate speech. Well, at that point, the argument ceases. It's no longer an argument. That's interesting. You are very clear about a judgment, this uh, quote. But you can't be as clear about yourself with pig heads. Look, as far as the pig heads, pig heads are concerned, I think I've made my position fairly clear. What I thought it was a thought experiment. An uh, experiment. A thought experiment. A thought experiment. Yes. Mm. Um, many people took it for real, so I got a whole flood of hate mail. Uh, Sh Shoreline was the launch, launch pad, I imagine. Uh, one doesn't really know where tweets come from, uh, but it happened. Uh, I'm, I'm a sadder and wiser person. I want to try to understand your fear. How many Hungarians are there? It's just, it's very difficult to say who exactly is a Hungarian, but we generally count about 13 and a half million. But then there are people in the United States of Hungarian descent who say they're Hungarian, and they can actually apply Let me for say Hungarian. 10 million? I'm sorry? 10 million more or less? Oh, a bit more than that. Okay. How many Muslims live in Hungary? Mm, 20,000. Not even 0 point percent. Viktor Orban says he wants to keep Europe Christian. Do you agree? I agree with this, yes. So no Muslims? Muslims, yes, if they accept the, the dominant norms which are derived from Christianity. Christian, Europe Christian. What's about Jews? Jews, fine. They're fine? Yeah, it's because it's the, the Judeo-Christian tradition that we're looking at. Uh, uh, Christian Christianity Christian? has taken a great deal from Judaism. Uh, the relationship between Christians and Jews, as, uh, as I know, has been bloody. Christian persecuted and killed Jews up until the Second uh, Vatican Council. Uh, I think I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, this is a fairly shameful part of European history. Um, on the other hand, at this particular time, I think relations between Christians and Jews have never been better. I have a question. You are a member of the European Union, yes. right? Still. European Parliament. But Hungary is still a member of the European Union. When I left Strasbourg yesterday, the answer was yes. Yes. So the freedom, freedom of movement is one of the pillars of the idea of the EU, correct? Yes. Um, if European of Muslim faith want to move to Hungary, will you stop them? No, we can't stop them. And if thousands will come? Absolutely true. So what's about your Christianity? Well, at that point, you know, we have to confront the problem and look at it see what's to be done about it. As I say, there is a small Muslim community already uh, in Hungary, partly Sunni, partly Shia. Your family fled, as I know, a totalitarian regime and settled in Britain. Mm -hmm. Why should that not apply to the people facing persecution? To the people facing persecution, it does apply to. It's the economic migrants that I'm talking From about. From Syria? I, uh, look, some from of the people, Syria? From some of the people from Syria are economic migrants. The majority of Syrian refugees, are they fleeing by the reason of war? Some or are, don't some know are. That? I don't know precisely because I haven't done any field work on this. We also know that the majority are in Turkey, in Lebanon and Jordan. I ask you again, do you really think that the majority of Syrian refugees are not fleeing because of war and because they are persecuted? I'm not so sh quite as definite about this as you are. I don't know their motivations. But give I, them a chance, as a chance was given also to you and your family. Uh, we took a chance, I think that's right. I'm quite prepared to believe that Yazidis and Christians are definitely fleeing because of fear for the fear of their lives. Whether all the Sunnis are so doing in the same way, I don't know the answer to that. If somebody is a refugee, do you ask him after he enters the country or before? As, Asylum seekers. Uh, as they enter the country. And if somebody is saying, I'm fleeing yes. because of the war in Syria, what are you doing then? Well, you we, say no? No, we, you are Muslim, we you are interview invaders? them and ask them to make a case. Part of the problem in 2015 was a very large number of people coming with forged Syrian passports. They were Bangladeshis or Pakistanis or Afghans. Do you think that Europe um, is endangered by the refugee crisis? No, Europe is actually in danger because of itself. 
because it's lost confidence in what it wants to be, it's completely divided, uh, and I'm somewhat concerned as to where Europe is headed for the next five years. Do you think that Hungary has a small responsibility about this? Hungary, I think, has a responsibility in the same way as any other country of the same size. Uh, and I think the responsibility is to offer an alternative to the hyperliberalism that is running Europe today. Nationalism at the answer? Nationhood is the answer. Thank you for being on Conflict Zone, Mr. Chaplin. It was a pleasure having you with me. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you.